Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we wanted to show you how to get some awesome text animation right inside of Premiere Pro, how to save your work as a motion graphics template, and then an awesome little trick inside of the Essential Graphics panel that'll help to make sure that no matter what your template actually says in each project, it's going to react exactly the same way. So let's jump right into it. We're going to be taking a look at two simple styles of effects that you can take and personalize for your own videos. The first is just a simple lower third entry, and the second one is a sleek line reveal. So let's start out with the basics. Let's just start by creating a piece of text by going to our text icon here, clicking it, and then going to our program monitor and clicking anywhere in this window. Or you can just hit Ctrl or Command T. This will create a piece of text that you can edit within this window, as well as a text box within your timeline that will house all of your work. So to actually type in what I want my text to say, I'm going to highlight my text, and then literally just type what you actually want it to say. To actually change things like size, font, and style, you can either go to the Essential Graphics panel or the Effect Controls panel. I'm going to stick inside of the Essential Graphics panel here for now, and I'm going to highlight my text to make sure that all of the changes are actually applied to it. Then I'm going to go down to my fonts here and then select something a little bit more to my liking. Choose a style and choose a size that feels right for your project. Now before we make the subtitle, we're actually going to animate this piece of text here and I'll show you why in a second. So we've edited the style of our text in the Essential Graphics panel, but now to edit the animation, we actually want to head over to the Effect Controls panel. Here we can see that this text layer as a whole has the option to change things like position, scale, etc. But we also have the ability to influence only this specific title that we just created. So we can go down to the bottom here and open up the text dropdown for that piece of text that we've been working on. From here we can go down to the transform options and we can animate the position of our text. Let's first make sure that it's starting in the correct position to begin with. And by that I mean have it placed in the position that you want it to actually land and end up when the animation is fully complete. And because I know that my text is going to be situated on the left hand side of the screen, I actually want it to be justified to the left. To do that, you have a bunch of different justification options here, but I'm going to justify it to the left hand side by clicking this button here. Let's bring the playhead to the place where we know that we actually want the animation to be fully complete. And then we can click this stopwatch here beside position to set the first keyframe. Now let's actually move backwards to the start where we want this animation to begin. And we can drag this first X position slider here so that our text appears fully off screen to the left hand side, and a keyframe will have been automatically generated. And now if we play back our footage, we can see that it looks something like this. It's a start, but there's still some work to go. Right now this looks really jarring and abrupt, just starting and stopping immediately. It would look a lot better if we could help the text come to a gradual halt. To do this, let's go ahead and right click on the ending keyframe here. Go down to Temporal Interpolation and select Ease In. And now our text looks something like this. It's better, but we can actually do a bit more to amplify this effect. If we toggle this drop down here beside the position parameter, we can actually open up a small graph viewer and we can see exactly the velocity our text is experiencing over time. If you grab onto these handles here, you can actually manually adjust the rate of speed and deceleration. So if I take this ending keyframe handle here and drag it down and a little out this way, we're actually making the animation start faster but end much more gradually. And so we get something a little bit more like this. Now I really like what this piece of text is doing, but what about the subtitle we wanted to create beneath it? Well the reason I haven't created it until now is that if we actually just duplicate our text here that we've been working with, we can keep the exact same animation that we just created, but just change up the style of the text a bit. So let's go up here again to the Essential Graphics panel, and highlight our text layer. Then hit Ctrl or Command C to copy it. Then Ctrl or Command V to paste a duplicate. You can also just right click it and select Duplicate. Great! You probably won't notice anything different right off the bat, so let's take this second one and go down to the anchor point and move it just below our original text. Then we can scale it down and align it to the left hand side so that it looks a little bit more like a subtitle. Now what we're left with is this, a nice smooth animation for both pieces of text. But we can actually give it a little bit of extra polish by going to the subtitle keyframing here, and highlighting both keyframes, and moving them forward just a bit. 
Now the animation appears slightly offset between the two pieces of text, even though the animation is technically exactly the same. It adds an overall fuller look to the effect. Awesome! So now let's take a look at how to create this little line animation that grows and ends up being the same length as the motion array text here. So let's make sure that our text layer here is selected. Then whenever we add in a new piece of text or shape layer, it'll actually be housed within this text layer. Go up to your central graphics panel and we're just going to go up to the page icon here to create a new shape and we're going to select rectangle. Next up, what I want to do is animate this so that it ends up growing into its final position. But I've got to make sure that this anchor point is completely centered first. If it's not, then the growing will happen disproportionately from left to right. So if you hold control or command and click and drag this anchor point around, you'll see that it snaps into key positions. I'd advise you getting it perfectly centered, but if you're only able to get it centered from left to right, then that's able to serve our purposes for now. And from here, I'm just going to create a really skinny line by grabbing either each of these sides here and clicking and dragging to get it to the place where I like. But this might mess up your anchor point location. The other option you can do is go down to the scaling parameters, unchecking uniform scale, and dragging these sliders to the desired amounts. This thin line is the end result that I'm going for. With that done, let's head over to Effect Controls and drop down the menu for the Shape layer. Now when we scroll down to Transform, we can set a keyframe here for Scale at the place and time where we want the animation to be completely finished, and in the correct length. Then go to Earlier On and drop it down to zero where we want the animation to start. Cool! Now the last thing to do is take the animation and give it a gradual ramp like we did before. So let's drop down this marker here, grab the handles, and create a nice bell curve for a smooth entry and exit from our animation. Nice! And guys, we've created this really simple but classy animation for our text. But here's the thing, if we really liked what we did, Chances are, we don't want to go through the trouble of that whole process again and again for every lower third or title that we use making this method. So instead, I want to show you two things that you can do to make your life a whole lot easier by saving this as a template for future use. The first thing is to incorporate a feature known as responsive design. We like the line animation being the same width as our title text. But if we save this as a template and change up the text, our line isn't going to fit. Then we'd have to reanimate it. But Premiere Pro has a feature that can do all of this work for you without having to reanimate. Let's go to the Essential Graphics panel and highlight the Shape layer. Now underneath Responsive Design, you can see that we can pin our shape to something else. We want to pin our shape to the text that we want it to match the size of, in this case, the main title that says Motion Array. With your shape layer highlighted, select that title text for it to be pinned to, and select the left and the right hand sides as we're only concerned about horizontal scaling for now. What this does is now keeps the line exactly the same length as it is now in proportion to how wide the text is. So if we highlight our text and start to rename it, we can see that our line now responds accordingly. Neat, right? Keep in mind that the line will only be proportional based off of the position that it was set at when you pinned it. So if you made it a little bit longer than your text, It'll keep that same padding for the edges that you defined when you use it for different titles. This is a game changer in my opinion. There's incredible applications for this. Like for example, say instead of a line you wanted to have a backdrop for your text. By setting pinning to all sides, you can create a text box that reacts to whatever your text happens to be. Even if you rename it, or even if you scale up your text size, your shape layer will respect the boundaries that you set. Awesome! But here's the thing. We can do one more thing to really take this up a notch. We can save our work here as a motion graphics template, or Mogart file. What this will allow us to do is basically save all the work that we have at this point in time, and then use that as a starting point for any changes that we want to make in the future, on any future projects. To save your work as a motion graphics template, keep in mind that it all has to be within the same text layer here on your timeline. There could be multiple different items, text, and shapes in this one text layer, but it needs to be set up as a unit in order to be saved as a unit. So if you right click the text box here and go up to export as motion graphics template, you'll go through the process of naming your template. And then when you save it, it'll show up in the browse section underneath your library here in the essential graphics panel. It'll likely be placed based on its alphabetical order. 
so I just named mine with a 1 in front to ensure that, for this example, it was really easy to find. Now we can simply drag and drop this template onto our timeline, and it appears exactly as we created it. And changing the text to say something new is exactly like you'd expect. And everything reacts properly. Nice! Okay, next up we want to create a text animation that looks sort of like this. This one takes those same concepts we just worked on, but adds a little bit of flair with some fun reveals through the use of masking. And just like before, we're going to be able to save this work as a motion graphics template, so that no matter what we type or what it says, the text will respond appropriately and reveal itself without any problems. So let's go ahead and create a new text box with any of your preferred methods. Minus to hit Ctrl or Command T. Next, highlight your text and type in what you want it to say. For this particular title, I'm always going to want it to be centered, so I'm just going to make sure that it's justified to the center. Then you can ensure that your text is perfectly centered, either horizontally or vertically, with these two icons here. Next, let's go ahead and create the subtitle and make it a little bit smaller. And then make sure that it too is horizontally centered. Then, let's go ahead and create the shape layer line. Okay, so we have the basic look here of what we want the final product to look like, but nothing is moving. So now comes the time to animate it and make it look like the text is appearing in context. So how do we do this? Let's start by animating the line. Let's go to Effect Controls and take a look at the Transform options for this shape layer. Let's go to the starting position where we'd like to set a keyframe. I want my line to start above all the text so that when it drops down, it reveals the first title. Let's also animate it in by unchecking the uniform scaling and keyframing it to end in this position. Then go back and set the horizontal scale to zero a little bit earlier on. Then give it a nice bell curve to give it some polish. Next, let's keyframe our position at the place where we actually want the line to start descending. Then move it forward to the place where we'd like it to be at the bottom. Then when we move the position downwards, a keyframe will be automatically generated. Then we'll keyframe it to move back up to the central point here between the two. Then we'll take all these keyframes and give them a little bit of curvature so that they're not too sharp or abrupt, but they feel more natural. I'm also going to duplicate this middle keyframe here so that there's just a little bit of breathing room of extra space between the downwards and upwards motion of the line. So right now our animation should look like this, and we haven't really done anything different than in our last example, apart from things just being in slightly different locations. But now comes the time to actually make it look like the text is being revealed by the line. Thankfully this is pretty easy. Let's go ahead and go to the first place where we think the text would actually start appearing. I want the text to start invisible and then to be revealed as it's being crossed. So let's go to the first title in our effect controls panel here. And let's create a mask for it. Off the bat, you might notice that the mask is a little bit too small. We actually want to make the mask so large that in the event that the text we add later on in this template is much longer than this one that we set up now, the mask will actually be able to account for this. So make sure that it's stretched out a bit more than you anticipate using in any given scenario. Next up, let's invert the mask to make things simple, so that our text is completely invisible to start with. And in order to reveal the text, all we need to do is move away the mask from the text. Now go to the place just before where you think the text would actually start to peek out around the shape layer. And set a keyframe for the mask path. Next up, go frame by frame forward and move the mask down for each frame. For us, the mask actually only needs to be keyframed for a couple of frames until the text is fully revealed. Then we can leave the mask as it is, and what we have is something like this. Cool, we can really start to see this effect coming to life. Now we just need to do the same process again for our subtitle. Create a mask. Make sure the mask is large enough. 
go to the first keyframe location, invert the mask, keyframe the mask path, move forward one frame and move the mask. Do this a couple more times and we're left with something like this. Awesome! The final thing we should do is use the responsive design pinning to make sure that this line is always changing to match whatever text we end up typing in. And again, just as a matter of personal taste, I'm making sure that the line is exactly the same width as our title text. I really like this. So let's go ahead and save this as a motion graphics template. And you can see that once we do, and once we try to put it back into our project, when we try to change up the title, the line responds and all of the masking and revealing is happening as expected. Great. Now guys, you may have noticed that I didn't set up any ending animation to take either of these pieces of text off screen. That's because there's a simple solution to save you some time. If you just take this text animation as it is, and then make a cut at the beginning right where the animation has just finished, and duplicate this part by holding Alt or Option and clicking and dragging it to the end, you can do something a little bit special. With this newly duplicated piece, you can actually reverse this section so that the text leaves exactly the opposite of how it entered. Either right click on this clip and go up to Speed Duration, or highlight the selection and hit Ctrl or Command R. In the event that the reverse speed option is grayed out, you'll likely just need to nest this section here by right clicking and selecting Nest. Then when you try it on the nested sequence, you should actually be able to reverse your clip. And with that, we have an excellent entry and an equally beautiful exit to our text animation. Guys, I really hope you liked this tutorial on how to give your text some excellent animations in Premiere Pro. And I hope that some of the little tips and tricks we showed along the way are able to serve your editing work for years to come. And if after all that, you just wanted some animation text packs to save you some time and energy, I'll link to some of the text packs that I feel are a little bit similar to what we created today. And hey, if you guys like this video, consider liking it and subscribing to our YouTube channel. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.